How do you get to know your community best? Or how do you get to know so many of the other great communities in the Puget Sound? Well, you go to your community blog, and we have one of the best ones here at My Edmonds News and Teresa Whipple, editor and publisher, right here on Community Blog TV. Teresa, welcome back. Thanks. Great to be here. Been a very, very busy month for My Edmonds News, as always. By the way, be sure to go to the website, myedmondsnews.com, and it's more than a website. It is a community resource. I think that's what you want it to be, huh? That's exactly it. Speaking of community resource, your lead story uh, this morning was um, cruise, city crews are monitoring Lake Ballinger after a diesel spill into a storm drain. That sounds pretty scary mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, it is. Uh, the lake that, that it actually, the storm drain goes to, Lake Ballinger, is right mm -hmm. there on the Snohomish County line and uh, has been a polluted lake anyway because of all the runoff from the neighboring uh, development. Yeah. Uh, so when you have something like that add to it, it's a concern. But it sounds like they've been doing everything they can to try to monitor it. What I was surprised about is only 20 gallons. Yeah, which, only 20 gallons. But that apparently can be enough to cause some problems. Well, that... That is the thing, I, uh, and that's kind of the reason that I even led with this, because it was, a, it was a diesel spill, which is scary, but then it's only 20 gallons, which mm -hmm. you think, hey, that's nothing, and mm -hmm. then they, the, the, the city comes in and says, well, yeah, that is pretty significant. Too. Yeah, yeah, so my understanding is, and I'm going to check in with them again later on today, but that they did put um, some absorbent pads and things like that around the, the outflows and, and the areas that they think might be a concern in hopes of uh, you know, keeping it from getting into the lake in a meaningful way. Now, in preparing for the show, I wanted to do something about all of the various community activities that there are. But this one turned out to be a little bit different. Let's actually go to, um, yeah, not that one. It's the, it's the next one right there. We are. It's the Friends, Friends of Edmonds Library Luncheon Draws a Big Crowd. So I thought it was people talking about the, uh, you know, the, the Friends of the Library and wanting to try to raise funds for the library. But no, it was something different. Mm -hmm. Let's actually go to the next click because it's all about the Edmonds Marsh. Right. And so environmentally, again, there's the people of Edmonds. Yeah, you know, the environment, I, because we live in such a beautiful spot with on the sound, um, I think people are very environmentally aware. And in fact, even in the political campaigns that are coming up, that's been something that, for example, our current mayor has very much touted that he's an environmental mayor. Uh, and the citizens care very much about what happens to um, their surroundings. And so, yeah, I was actually surprised myself. They invited me to this lunch, and I thought they were going to talk about books, and they were talking about the marsh, which is, uh, which is great. So is, um, is what happened at the, the Friends of Edmonds Library luncheon an educational piece about the marsh to help people with the, the marsh itself? Is that what it was? Yeah, I think it was just an update um, about uh, how it affects the community um, and the, the the, I want to say it's mostly women who are the friends of the library. There were mm -hmm. some men there too. But they are very much a, a community, civic-minded group, and I think it was just an educational opportunity for them. Okay, now let's, uh, let's go a little hardcore, so to speak. Uh, one of the uh, certainly biggest celebrities in Edmonds is Rick Steves, and he's, mm -hmm. he's certainly a world-known travel writer. Mm -hmm. Well, here, the story is that Edmonds Rick Steves joins others in the effort to legalize marijuana here in the state of Washington. Mm -hmm. So I was going through the quotes and the comments. It's like national level discussion going on. Mm -hmm. Let's actually go to the first one because here's from, from Don Hall and he says it's about time, you know, uh, like uh, prohibition where alcohol was really available, uh, you know, marijuana is really available, yada, yada, yada. And then right under it, the next comment is it'll never happen. Let's not go to that one, that quote yet. We'll be there in just a minute. But the, the quote right under it was, it'll never happen. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I think probably because Rick Steves is so well known in Edmonds, I think people feel somewhat of a personal, I mean, obviously it's an issue for a lot of folks, either pro or con, but, uh, and Rick Steves, of course, has been talking about this for many years. This is not a new issue for him. Mm -hmm. um, something. Does that, that make him less popular? Um, I, I it depends on your point of view. I think for those who <laughs> feel that it's time to legalize marijuana, they think it's just a natural progression, and why shouldn't somebody who's a public official or a, a well-known official speak out about it? For those who are a little bit less sure whether that's a good, you know, course of action, they might think he's kind of an oddball to suggest such a thing. And 
he really doesn't care what you think on that. He does, could does, care less. <laughs> no, he's you know he's always been very outspoken about that, mm -hmm. and he actually put on a. The ACLU and Rick Steves sponsored a forum on this a uh, year and a half ago that I attended and covered. And, uh, and actually, they had the uh, former assistant U.S. attorney who's been very uh, outspoken about this issue yeah, as well, um, John McKay. McKay. Yeah. Um, and said the same thing they said now, which is, uh, you know, why do we waste our resources on something like this when there's so many more mm. important things? So, and I, I you know, I, I think there's been some good debate about that. And the debate did continue. Let's actually go back, if we can go back to the quotes. This one is the Joe Morgan quote where he talks there at the bottom, and it's a little bit hard to see, and that's because I didn't make it big enough. It says, there's no doubt that drug abuse is still a terrible problem, especially when it's, uh, you know, kids doing it. But we've waged the war on drugs for 40 years, and things have just gotten worse. So that's, mm -hmm. do you think, as someone in journalism, do you think that that's going to be the overriding thing that people are going to talk about, that the war on drugs has never been won? That is certainly the public opinion that I've been seeing, not just on my admins news, but in other places I've looked. And it'll be really interesting to see how it shakes out. My understanding is, is that no matter what you do at the state level, the federal government still has not changed its mind. And until that happens, it doesn't really matter what we do. Because mm. they trump whatever happens in the states. I mean, I'm not a legal expert, but that's my understanding. There's one thing's for sure. The citizens of Edmonds are ready. Let's actually go to the next quote after that. The one right after that is... It says, hey, I'm all about legalizing marijuana, and it's gonna, I'm going to be opening up the first coffee shop in Edmonds. It'll be called Pot and Pot. I've already <laughs> reserved the trademark. That's great, yeah. So, okay, and that actually is a regular commenter because I've, I've read that before. Yeah. Or I read that from that uh -huh. gentleman before. Yeah, actually, it's, it's a woman, Priya. Yeah. Oh, a she, woman? And, she, and she's, she's very outspoken and just kind of says what she thinks, and there was an example of that. There we are. So she's <laughs> going to make a business out of it. Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, city council. Uh, it's uh, it's a big deal. City Council uh, moves ahead on complete streets, Westgate setbacks, and electric car charging stations. And here was something that I don't think I have seen ever. Let's go to the quotes. The very first three quotes are now, this is the kind of City Council meeting summary I'd like to see, a long list of things that are voted on and moving into implementation. Next person says, what a great meeting. Third person says the same thing. Mm -hmm. Wow, so there's actually people co complimenting government. How does that happen? Well, <laughs> and here's what's funny about that. Part of the reason is is that because for the last probably um, seven or eight or ten council meetings, they have done very little. So, oh, I so think that was a Bronx it, it was absolutely. <laughs> it was like, it's about time. How great. And, I mean, I think positive reinforcement. I actually, mm -hmm. myself, it was a long meeting. There was a lot on the agenda. We were all worried we were going to be there till midnight. We were there till almost midnight. Mm. But so much was done, and usually... Usually there's just a lot of debate and no decisions, so I think that uh, people felt really good about that. Yeah, and just for those of our viewers who are asking the question, we have asked this question before, you know, when do you ever sleep? And I think you sleep <laughs> three or four hours a night. That's about right, yeah. Wow, amazing. Okay, let's actually continue on, though, with the city council meeting because not everybody was happy. Here's the, from this Ron Wombolt. And he says he didn't attend the entire council meeting, but he's, what he's really talking about is how there is a discrepancy of around $140,000, $150,000 roughly in some estimates. And then the next person says, uh, one thing that in Edmonds government that it doesn't seem to, to be in short supply is bad financial information. Is that true? <laughs> there has been a lot of conversation about our finances, about our financial books, um, how we report information to citizens. One of our council members who's running for re-election has actually made that um, a, a, very, a, a large issue. Um, and I'm, to be perfectly honest, um, every time I see comments about that and even when I go to meetings, I'm not quite sure who to believe because everybody has a slightly varying opinion. What I think is probably fair is that there are some outdated, um, uh, there's some outdated computer software in the city that they have not been able to upgrade and it has made it harder for them to be able to produce the reports that are citizen friendly and that people want. So it's kind of like the chicken and the egg, you know, mm. we've got budget problems, can we afford to get new software? So I think there's some of that going on as well. Let's go back to the quotes because we're essentially, or to the comments actually, we're borrowing from Everett Dirksen when this uh, one gentleman says, oh, what the hey, uh, you know, what's $141,000 among friends, $141,000 here, there, and pretty soon it's real money. 
But this kind of does get, get back to, I mean, in the city of Seattle with the massive budget that they have, $141,000 is real money. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so I would think in Edmonds with not quite as large a budget, it's real money there too. It really is. And again, uh, in the political campaigns that are coming up, uh, w whether we have a, a revenue problem or a deficit problem has been kind of the common theme, or do we have both and what do you do about it? And, and there's been a fair amount of pushback from citizens who've said, before you start talking about, because we do have a budget crisis, before you start talking about putting a levy on the ballot to tax us, could you please make sure that you've really looked at everything and, and cut everywhere you can? And that's, I think, frankly, going to be one of the primary issues that people are going to be looking at. Mm. So you're, in, in essence, uh, people are electing managers today rather than policymakers. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's, in, in these tight economic times, I think people are voting with their pocketbooks for sure. Mm. Um, something I've always admired about the way that you operate My Edmonds News is that for the commenters, you ask you ask them, require them to publish their names. Yes, so you, I do. We're not going to be having these, uh, you know, hits like happen so oftentimes in, in other places where you just kind of hit and run with anonymous or mm -hmm. anonymity. So let's kind of go to some quotes. Continuing on with the city council meeting, and here's what happened here. Um, let's actually hit the next click because we're going to see. It says Ron W says to Ron B, I have only one final comment to make to you, and that is you're a liar. <laughs> in all caps. <laughs> yes, in all caps. And Ron W. responds back, a liar? Well, I guess I've hit a nerve. <laughs> so let's go to the next click because here is a Daryl uh, says, uh, now this Ron and Ron discussion is interesting. One day the two of you guys are going to meet on the street, basically, and you're going to have to be nice to each other. And then finally you had to jump in. Yeah, uh -huh. I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, I basically warned them and said, uh, in, in general, didn't point out names, but basically said, you know, we have to be careful about personal attacks. But what's really interesting about that dynamic with people using their real names, um, there was an earlier discussion between some other commenters about um, some name calling that had happened and, mm -hmm. you know, a council member who had been involved in a legal dispute and somebody was on his case about that. And another commenter jumped in and said, you know what? How about if I buy you guys both lunch? And I was just <laughs> laughing because it's like this is the civility that happens when people finally realize that it's gone a little too far and let's come back to trying to work it out. And you can't always, but I think when you use real names, it does make a difference that people realize there are people behind, faces behind those names. Do you think by requiring people to use the, their names that that inhibits some people from even making a comment? You know, I believe it probably does, and that's the argument against it. Um, I did have one person, I think we talked about this on a previous show, one person that no longer comments because she chose not to want to use her real name. And I think that's too bad. Um, I, I've always told people that if they had a comment that they wanted to make but didn't want to use their name, I'd be happy to submit it on their behalf. Or if they had a tip, like a, something that they wanted me to follow up on, that they wanted to be anonymous, there was a way for them to do that too. Um, it's definitely a double-edged sword, but I think it's the right thing to do for, for my community. Maybe in other communities not, but in my community. Well, and interestingly enough, on my Edmonds News throughout, what you see is uh, members of government, council members actually responding to comments and actually becoming part of the debate directly with the public. Yeah. And here, that's been the most disappointing thing that I've ever, uh, I've never seen a city operate the way the city of Seattle uh, and every, just about every other public entity inside the city where people don't seem to talk to each other or especially at government. Instead, they, they talk by them, they throw rocks mm -hmm. at them and then they go away and the next person comes up and throws rocks. And so I think maybe you're doing a really good thing by saying, you know, yeah, you got to talk to each other. Well, and I think in the terms of elected officials, what often happens is people are afraid of exposing themselves too much to the public, so they just say, oh, I'm just going to stay out of this and let people fight amongst themselves. But I think there's a lot of credibility to be had for somebody who's willing to just, you know, get on to a discussion and express an opinion. We're going to take a very short break. As the world becomes more and more electronic and it, and it actually becomes more and more connected, community blogs are becoming more and more important to your everyday life. And for those people who live in Edmonds, I don't know that you could get better information than on MyEdmondsNews.com. Teresa Whipple, the editor and publisher of MyEdmondsNews.com, is with us every four weeks right here on Community Blog TV. Strongly encourage you to go to the website, uh, comment, learn something, find a place to go have dinner. Uh, all sorts of things that you can find on myedmondsnews.com uh, and um, go there early and often. Okay, that was that was kind of like a salesy type thing, and I didn't it mean sure it for was. that. Thank I, I you. just really like the publication <laughs> an awful lot. Okay.
Two more Edmonds Council campaigns are set for next week. There's, so there's all sorts of people running for office up there uh, in Edmonds, even though it's got to be pretty tough to be a member of, uh, you know, of a legislative body these days. Oh, it really is, uh, especially where you've got uh, some problems in the government. I mean, I think all governments have their shared problems these days. It's a tough uh, gig at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Edmonds, the thing about Edmonds is, is that we really love to be engaged with, uh, with our, our politicians and hold them accountable, at least a select group. I, I guess there's probably, you would say, the majority of people are uh, not as engaged, but there are definitely those who care. Well, but the people who are reading the blog, they're seeing the questions, yeah. and so they're actually uh, gaining from those as well. Yeah, that's right. But even if people don't want to do any of that, they can still get engaged with the, the people who are running for office because you've got them on television. That's right, yeah. And actually, let's go to, to uh, my Edmonds News publisher, Teresa Whipple, interviews Mayor Mike Cooper and everybody else that's in the, the candidacy scene, mm -hmm. at least for council and for mayor, and for right? mayor, yeah, that's what we're doing, at least for the primary. We're not mm -hmm. sure what it's going to look like for the general, but hope to bring everybody back, um, the, the finalists back uh, two by two and actually have them on at the same time. I think mm -hmm. that would be very interesting. By the way, and uh, both mayoral candidates uh, are going to be on. I think actually they, they may both have been on, but they're also uh, going to be able to be archived soon. Um, and, uh, you know, Monday night, uh, mayoral uh, candidates Mike Cooper and Dave Erling were, were live, and this was uh, June the 20th in the past. And so I'm going to go to a comment because the comment said, Teresa, your local news site is clearly the best. For those of us with busy lives and unable to make it to all the live debates and meetings, having a resource like your site is invaluable. I look forward to the Q&A and hearing from both candidates. And so and I encourage all of you who live in Edmonds, make yourself a more informed voter by watching the videos that, uh, and the video interviews that are being done by My Edmonds News and Teresa Whipple right there. And the way that you can access them is by going to MyEdmondsNews.com and, and let's go to the click because right there up at the top it says video. Just click on that and you're going to be able to find all sorts of different interesting things. So before we leave this topic, what are the big issues for candidates for council and mayor? Well, for sure the budget, like we talked about before, making mm -hmm. sure that everything is, uh, that all of the financial uh, cuts that can be made or made before they start talking about putting a levy on the ballot. That's a big one. Um, just generally being open and transparent with the public about all the things they're doing. Um, I think that people are just want to make sure that they get the information they need so that they can make decisions. Um, economic development is a huge issue for Edmonds. We do have, while, the, while we certainly have some thriving businesses, there's also some empty storefronts. There's some areas of town where um, you know, we would like to see more business development. The whole ni Highway 99 corridor, which is not in the downtown core, but that mm -hmm. is also part of Edmonds in that part of Highway 99 that goes from the King County line uh, up to about, uh, I think it's 212th. Uh, that is all Edmonds, and uh, there's some places that could be built out there too. So I think that's a huge concern, just to make sure that we've got a thriving downtown business. And this hasn't really come up yet, but it seems to always come up, the issue of building heights in Edmonds. Um, it, there has been a, a debate for a really long time about how far up our buildings should go, how much development we should have. Some people look at Kirkland, which has developed quite a bit and has some taller buildings on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. Some people say that's what we should do. Some people say that's what we should not do. Um, I think the answer probably lies somewhere in between, but we do know that unless something happens in terms of more development, our town will not grow, um, will not give us the economic uh, stability we need to, to support our services. Well, so it's certainly a, a tough time to uh, be running for office That's, and it, probably an even tougher time to be one who's already in office yeah. uh, and who is in office in the future. And, of course, it's tough for the voters because you have very difficult choices. Yeah. Uh, so they got to stay tuned to My Edmonds News. That's right. Um, I noticed uh, there was some national advertising on your site and there's also some very local advertising. And so uh, let's actually go to this because one of, one of the local advertisements is for the Edmonds Community Foundation. And so, and I, and I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting. And let's actually go to the click uh, itself, because if you were to go to the Edmonds Community Foundation website, uh, you'd find a very engaged organization, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they really are. And what, one of the things, one of their major initiatives that uh, is so wonderful, and uh, they uh, provide what they call uh, rolling backpack programs mm -hmm. and they actually fill up backpacks for kids who are qualified through um, you know free, free and reduced lunch programs so they're from low-income homes 
they actually give the kids a backpack full of food to take home with them on a Friday and then they bring it back on Monday. There's no stigma attached because it would be just like um, any kid with a backpack. Mm -hmm. um, it's all zipped up and they just go discreetly uh, into the office and get it. But the Community Foundation actually raises money and gets donations to be able to fill those backpacks. They have volunteers who actually mm -hmm. do the filling. Um, and it's just a wonderful program for them to be able to Has their get. job become tougher because there's more demand over the past couple of years? Oh yeah, I think everybody's seen that. I mean, we have so many agencies like that in our area as everyone does. Um, you know, we have a local charity called Clothes for Kids, and they basically provide wardrobes for children who can't afford school clothes and, and that kind of thing. And they're always trying to, you know, find a way to raise money because mm. it's uh, there's more families now who need it. Yeah, uh, big kudos to a, a local business. It's uh, Shermac. Mm -hmm. uh, they named one of Seattle Business Magazine's best companies to work for. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a great firm. Um, uh, the gentleman who who founded Shermac Construction is a uh, longtime uh, Edmonds resident and uh, uh, just uh, a great guy and you see his name and the company's name on Howard Chermack is his name just about everything uh, any kind of uh, festival or or any kind of community event he's always pitching in and sponsoring and helping to raise money so he's it's a well-deserved uh, the employees are very happy too I know the marketing manager and she said they just have a bunch of fun and uh, it's it's a wonderful place to work by the way, your own, the Myanmar's News own, Citizen Harry is a hydromaniac. Yes, he is. And here he is. He wrote the, the column, um, Edmund's own uh, hydroplane is ready to leave Friday for the season start. Uh, are the people of Edmonds excited about the, their own hydroplane? You know, we've gotten uh, several comments about it, and it'll be, I guess, just like with any other sport, it probably happens when you start winning. Uh, so, so we'll see what happens. I guess they're they're off to uh, the Midwest right now, leaving today uh, to go to their first uh, race, and we'll see how they do. So the message is, uh, Harry, if your hydroplane loses, uh, you know nobody's going to care about you anymore. <laughs> Maybe, is that it? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, another column is uh, real early on is schools out for the Edmonds area public schools. So that being the case, with school being out, how do things change for you? Uh, well, we do a fair amount of school coverage, so we, we won't have as much of that. But, you know, there's so many community activities that ramp up in the summer in Edmonds. I mean, we've got the Fourth of July festival. Mm -hmm. You know, we have do a you have huge... fireworks? Yes, okay. we do. And, in fact, every, all the surrounding communities have canceled theirs, so they all come to Edmonds. And, actually, the Edmonds Chamber of Commerce puts on our fireworks, and they just got a $25,000 grant from a local foundation to help with that because they financially in the past just relied on individual donations or the goodness of people's hearts to help out. So they they were thrilled to get that money to help. Yeah, they have a 4th of July parade. They have a kids parade. They have the fireworks. I mean, it is an all-day thing, and everybody comes to Edmonds to mm. wave the flag and celebrate the 4th. Well, that sounds like lots of fun. Um, I think I say this every single time, and it's still true, mm. and is that uh, quickly... Uh, one of my favorite columnists of any newspaper blog anywhere is David Coffer. Yeah. Uh, he's the Edmonds kind of dad, and um, and his column this time is the end of an era as the twins get ready to start kindergarten. He's got twins. Yes. Uh, one child is autistic. Right. Uh, so there's some differences for him, but he was in this column. He was talking about a friend of his at Cisco where he worked, and um, there was this this woman who was late, and she had was clearly had been crying. Mm -hmm. And he, she said she took her son to kindergarten for his first day of school, and it made her emotional to see him already so old and composed heading to school. She said she knew an era was over. And that's what this column is about, an era being over. Do you think there's a parent out there who can't identify with this? Oh, I, everybody has, who has a child five or older has, has gone through it. And when I read it, when he sent it to me, it brought back all kinds of memories about my kids. And, you know, and of course, now my kids are in college or older, and mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You watch <laughs> them go through that next era of their lives, and you just can't believe they've grown so fast. But, yeah, I mean, just that leaving them off at kindergarten. I, I bet he will be writing a column about that day, too, which should be fun to, fun to read. So columns like this, I mean, they're, they're feel-good columns, but at the same point in time, we've kind of, we've all been there. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe, you know, for the younger viewers, they haven't been there yet. Right. Um, what, what generally, there's not a whole lot of comments that are, that are in his columns. 
but do people stop you on the street and say, wow, that column really is true, or something like that? I have had people tell me that. And in fact, I have several columnists who um, have that reputation among my readers. And, and, I've, and probably as important as anything, when I have a columnist who writes about someone else in town, something else that's going on, having that person come up to me and say, boy, they sure did a great job on that story. They really, they really captured me, or they really wrote about what I was talking about well. And that makes me feel really good to know that I have writers like that that represent the community. Well, okay. So that leads exactly into the question of the day. And, and I've got to ask you, Teresa, does this column capture you? And the column is, ask the vet about familiar greetings between dogs. And the question is, why do dogs greet each other by sniffing under their tails? <laughs> Yeah. Is, is well, this you? Uh, you know, I have a dog, and I, I've actually had dogs most of my life, and I've always wondered, and I never knew the answer. I figured they, you know, from a human perspective, we think it's the rudest thing ever. I mean, <laughs> humans are not going to be doing that to each other, obviously, on a regular basis. But, uh, you know, as Dr. Gross says, there's a reason for it. Yeah, and, and he says this in the column. He says, after the dogs become better acquainted, the behavior reduces in both duration and intensity. The dogs know each other better better basically but cats are much less inclined to do this probably because they're so secure in their own skin <laughs> <laughs> and they don't really care <laughs> they don't care <laughs> absolutely amazing he it's um, you know, and I look at his picture and I'm thinking, wow, here's this kind old veterinarian. Mm -hmm. This has got to be one of the funniest guys around. He is <laughs> hilarious. Uh, yeah, I, I just actually, before I came here, I noticed he had just sent me his column for the weekend and I did not open it up. I'm going to be really excited to see what the <laughs> subject matter is. Actually, I was talking to somebody about this very column and I said, you got to read this. You got to read this because you just won't, you know, you won't believe it because he talks about actually anal sacs and, and different things and he, he talks about it in a clinical way yeah. but it's just funny yeah it really is so maybe um, maybe after the political season is over you could do stand up with the, the veterinarian yeah. yeah actually that's what I'm hoping to do with the with the video with the uh, live webcasting is to have it be a regular feature where we do have some people from different uh, parts of the community come on and talk and, and the columnists for sure the vet would be a great <clears> one just to have people submit their questions and have him answer them yeah, it actually would. Uh, we only have about a minute left, and so I want to get back uh, to the, the serious side uh, a little bit more because you've got these candidate interviews that are coming up. Um, is, is there testiness? Is there positioning? Is there what's, what do you expect to happen in, from these interviews? Um, you know, there's been a little bit of that when we interviewed the mayoral candidates last week. There was, and I asked the questions, you know, basically, you know, the, the uh, incumbent mayor says he thinks he's doing a good job. His challenger, of course, thinks he's a, not a very good leader, and so we've had some back and forth about that. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, as we get the challengers in more. We've had mostly incumbents so far, mm -hmm. and in the next couple of weeks we'll be having the challengers come in and see what they're really going to be picking apart uh, with the incumbents and what they think they could do better. Um, I, I think, you know, it's a vital part of government, and I think one of our candidates actually had said it very well, and that is it's really part of our democracy when people start... Um, you know, conflict is part of our democracy. Um, conflict is part of our democracy is going to be yeah. the, the last word. <laughs> and with that, uh, thank you to Teresa Whipple. Be sure to go to myedmondsnews.com and read all about Edmonds and find out all about the great things that you can find out right there in Edmonds. We'll see you right here next week on Community Blog TV. Take care. Thank you.